We're now going to leave Greening & Co behind for a little while, simply because the styles we're going to try and achieve in this particular chapter will be very, very different to the look and feel we're aiming for on the Greening & Co website. So I've created a quick trial Squarespace website. We will be adding in our graphics, and I've deliberately chosen this high contrast black and white theme. If we head over to our online store, pixelhaze.store, we can see that we have a template that utilizes this particular style, where we've got the mud splatter effect coming over the top of the photo. So we're going to try this effect as well. So where we've got half of the image on a black background to make the text really jump out. And we'll also then be creating a frame to go on the bottom of the photo if it was a full width banner. So let's jump back over to Canva. I don't need to create a new file. I can just add a new page, either duplicate or add a new page. I think I'm just going to add a brand new page, change the background to jet black, which will be option in the default section here. And once I've done that, now I can start looking for a photo. So I've already had a quick go at this just to check that everything I was doing made sense. And we're going to use this motocross image in here. So the difference with one of the differences with this particular chapter to what we did last time is we're actually going to spread the photo so it fills the full width proportionately. So we don't want to stretch it, but we are finding a photo that we, our motocross rider is far enough in the distance. So we've got some nice space above and below. Now, one thing you may notice is that it's framed in there. What happens is if we put a photo large enough on the bottom layer, it will default to the background. So we've got to leave a little bit of space above for the masthead, but also we want to leave some space at the bottom so we can frame this particular photo. So that will do nicely. And then we can see about the text overlaying here. What I'm going to do first of all is have a look at editing the image and maybe have a look at some filters. Like afterglow. No, that's too strong. If you're finding that the intensity is too strong, you can just take it back a little bit. So I might just put a, a little bit of this particular filter in just to bump up the sharpness and the colors a little bit. Don't want too much of it though, because it, it takes it away from the original photo. So I might just leave it on about four, just to give a bit more punch to the photo. And another option, we can go into the adjustments here and, and tweak the color settings. So we're gonna go for slightly darker with a high contrast. We want this to look quite edgy and to really, really jump out. So we'll just tweak the saturation as well. Might bring the shadows down. It's a balancing act. You may be looking at this and thinking I've edited it too much, but when we're going for a motorsport theme, we're looking for a more intense look than say we would be for small businesses. I'd probably just remove that initial effect that I put on the photo, but we'll leave it like that for now. I'm now going to jump across to elements and from here now we can have a look for splatter. So I've looked for various options and splatter is probably as good as any in terms of finding a search to get some elements that we want to overlay the bottom of the photo so we can have it cutting into a black background without it being a solid line. So what we're looking for is graphics that fit onto a transparent background. So this one's out of the question based on that. And also splatter effects that we can change the color of if needed. So we've got to have this color swatch here and we double check it's on black, which it is. So simply I could copy, control C and then control V to paste and then essentially replicate this across. A quick trick is we could flip it 
And as we can see here now, we're not having the same area repeating constantly. And then again, we could flip this horizontally. And then maybe vertically as well. So there we go. That's a very quick way of using the splatter effect to create a frame at the bottom. If you wanted more, more detail and more of a blend into the photo, we could then look at using additional splatter effects that are in the same style. So quite a coarse edge on these. And we could build up things like the corners. So if we're only using one color for our frame, it makes the whole process that much easier. Just going to rotate it round and build up that area. I'm also looking to take out sections like this, just in case the bottom of the photo bleeds through into the line and we see that solid line. I think it would be okay there anyway, but just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to find some additional splatter effects to fill that in. And there we go. That's a really quick, efficient way. Actually, I don't like that because it's, we want to keep the motorcycle nice and clean. Yeah, that's a really quick, handy way of utilizing Canva. And you can see a lot of these are free. Some of them are paid on the pro account. So again, if you're doing this quite often, the pro account could be suitable for you, but you should be able to find enough effects that are free, especially if you find a photo on unsplash.com and then upload it here. You should be able to do all of this free of charge. Okay, that now frames the bottom of the photo nicely. Before we drop this into the website, we're going to duplicate this. And now this time, we're going to create the frame coming through this way as well, instead of it across the bottom. You could do both, but I'm just going to reuse the assets we've already created just to show how we can do this. Okay, so I've reused those assets. My last job now is to fill in this space here, and then we've got a nice frame. But what I'm going to do first is actually move these along, just in case the text needs to go over a little bit further in our hero unit. And you can play around with this until you get the desired effect that you're after. But that should do it. Probably don't need that one there. Or indeed that one. So I'll just make it a little bit quicker in Canva. If we're using lots and lots of layers, then the, the speed of the software, because it's based in Chrome, we are limited by the abilities of Chrome as opposed to dedicated software. That's something to consider as well. So sometimes by removing assets that aren't needed helps to speed things up. Okay. Okay, that's obviously blue, so we can change that to black. And now we have two very different frame types, but both following the same theme. I quite like this one, especially when we can put text on there. What I can also look to do is enlarge this image a little bit because we've got a bit more space on this one because we're not framing the bottom, meaning that it's going to be a bit more detail over to this side here. Another option we've got is to find another motocross photo. And we could just have it so it overlays this right hand side. So that gives you more control over where it's framed. So what I can do now is, is move this to the back. The reason it's still over top of the other photos is because the other photo is the background and that goes behind everything. So if you center back, it will still appear in front of that particular image. We can then go in, edit this image, final steps. Maybe increase the vibrance of the photo, take it right up, see what happens. Up there a little bit. Nice high contrast. We want the dark tones in the overalls here to match the black here. And maybe just take the 
brightness down a tiny bit. And we want to bring that shadows down so we've got a really nice moody image to match the overall style. Of course, all of those steps are optional and you'll have your own flavor that you want to find with your own particular photos. But there we go. We've got two banners now, so we're going to download those as. It's a difficult one, JPEG or PNG. We're going to try JPEG first and see how that works. If it's graphics like these frames here, you, you generally lean towards PNG or you almost always would. But if they're photos, you would lean towards JPEGs because they compress. They have better compression for smaller files, but we might see some distortion from pixelation on this single color section. So there might be a case of trial and error. I'm going to download them one at a time. That means that they're saving as JPEGs, not JPEGs in a zip folder. And then the same step then, the difference is here. Now I'm going to uncheck page four, and check page five and download that one. Again, I'd recommend renaming them from Untitled Design. So I believe if you had a page title, it will actually rename the graphics to match, which would have been a good step to take. I'm now jumping back into Squarespace and I'm going to create simple headlines in that style. We go into settings, set it to medium height and see how that looks to start with. Now I'm going to remove that background image and upload a new image from library. Nope, sorry. Brain's not functioning in today. <laughs> I'm going to upload a file directly from the computer. So I'm going to go to my two downloaded images. I'm going to upload the first one to get us up and running. The one thing we may need to do is to move the focal point down to the bottom so we get the entirety of this frame in there. But there we go. So that's just showing how we can get that first effect. And then we can add overlay opacity to darken the image so it'll fit, but a really nice, intriguing start to our website. In this case, I might even just, I'll certainly take out the call to action, remove that. Now, if that happens, we can go back into the settings. We can go from medium height and we can customize the height of that banner. If you're doing this on a subsequent page, like about us, then I'd always recommend either remembering what that setting is or picking one of the defaults when we're setting our banners. For the home page, they can be deeper because it's all about that initial first impression. But that works nicely there. I'm just going to add a blank or text. Oh, that's for the footer. We don't want to add one in there. I'm going to add a section. And I'm just going to add it, just a simple uh, quote section in here to separate the two banners. And then I'm going to add a new banner section. Or headline as Squarespace calls them. Again, same style. And once again, I'm going to remove that background image. Or I could click on replace and upload a file. I'll now upload our second one. And once that's uploaded, we can go back to the format options. Go from large and just choose the height of that frame. I could then put a spacer block in to move this content in, or I could just set the content width manually. We want to keep the content alignment to the left, otherwise it would just move it over to the center. And in this case, I think either bottom, as shown there, or center will work the best. We've got a lot of this space here that's unused and not really balanced. That's that one. So now we've got two really striking banners working nicely on the site. If we wanted to see how that bottom banner works as a right at the top, we can just use the arrows 
to move the panel up. Just bear in mind this is Squarespace 7.1. So if you if if you can't do this on your Squarespace website, it's because you're on a previous version. But these image effects will still work with a bit of tinkering. Okay, so that actually works really nicely as a main hero as well. So we've been through quite a bit in this chapter. Two different approaches for the same overall style. Next up, we'll have a look at combining background images with floating transparent PNGs. <laughs>